All right, guys, so for this video, what I'm going to do is show you how to run an independent sample t-test in SPSS. Now, if you remember, an independent sample t-test is used to determine if there's a difference between two groups on one dependent measure. For example, using this data file, I may want to determine if the size of a tumor is larger if the cancer has spread to the lymph nodes. Now, before you run any sort of statistical analysis, it's always important to check to make sure that those assumptions for that test are met. However, in this video, I'm not going to necessarily go over how to check these assumptions, so be sure to go ahead and check out my t-test assumptions video, which I'll post a link in the description box as well as in this video. Now, once you decided that all the assumptions have been met or you've dealt with them, you are now ready to run your independent sample t-test. All right, so to get started, what you first need to do is make sure you know the variable names for both your grouping variable and your dependent variable. This is just going to make life a little bit easier when you get to the analysis part. So my grouping variable is whether or not the cancer spreads to lymph nodes or not. So if I go ahead and look at row 10, I can see that that's my variable that I'm going to use. So the variable name is ln underscore yes, no. Now my dependent variable is the tumor size. So if you go ahead and look at row 3, that's going to be the dependent variable that I'm going to use. So the variable name that I need to remember is path size. Now, once you have the variable names either memorized in your brain or written down on a sheet of paper, you can now run the independent sample t-test. To do this, what you're going to do is go to Analyze, which is at the very top of the screen. Then go to Compare Means, and then click on Independent Sample t-test. Once you click on Independent Sample t-test, you should get a screen that pops up just like that. Now, I decided to move that screen down a little bit because I forgot what the values were for my group of variable, which is extremely important if you want to run this analysis correct. So the first thing that you'll notice is that all of the variables in your data file are on the left-hand box. Um, and what I'm going to do in this screen is show you how to change it from variable labels to variable names because it's a whole lot easier to work with the variable names. So all you do is click on a variable, doesn't matter which one, right click. If you're on a Mac, it's control click. And then this screen will pop up and then all you have to do is select variable names. And what you'll notice now is that all it's showing is the variable names and not the variable label and then the variable names. Next, what you need to do is find your dependent variable and that dependent variable is going to go under test variable. So for my example, what I need to find is path size. So I'm going to find path size and then either double click on it or highlight it and then hit the first arrow button, the top arrow button. Once I have my dependent variable under the test variable box, next what I need to do is find my grouping variable. And if you remember, it's ln underscore yes, no. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find it, select it, and then click on the lower arrow button. And you'll notice it goes under grouping variable. Now, once that variable name shows under grouping variable, what I'm going to click on is define groups. And this is when it's really important to know what the values are for your grouping variable, because if you don't put them in correct, then it's just going to screw up the analysis. By looking at row 10, and then looking at the values, I can see that one of the values is zero. And by using that information, I can conclude that the two values for the groups are zero and one. So for group one, what I'm going to do is put zero. And for group two, what I'm going to do is put one. The most common values that are used are zero and one and one and two. It just depends on how the data file is set up. Okay, so now that you have your grouping values in there, you can just go ahead and click continue and then go ahead and click OK. It's in the bottom right hand corner. And this is going to run your analysis. 
Okay, so what you're going to notice first on this output is that at the very, very top, there's this syntax, and that is just essentially telling you exactly what you asked SPSS for. Um, there's more to syntax, but we're not going to get to that in this video. The second thing that you'll notice is that there's two tables. Now, the first table is simply a descriptive table, and what it's going to tell you is the n, the mean, the standard deviation, and the standard error of the mean for both of your groups. So in our case is, did their cancer spread into the lymph nodes? Did their cancer not spread into the lymph nodes? So yes, no. The second table is the independent sample t-test table. And this is how you're going to tell whether or not your groups are significantly different. Okay. Now, the one th assumption that I will go over on how to check is the assumption of homogeneity of variance, or um, it's also known as the assumption of equality of variance. To check this assumption, what you're going to look at is the Levine's test for equality of variance. It's that very first section in the independent sample t-test table. Now, for the Levine's test, you want it to be not significant. So in other words, you want the p-value to be greater than 0.05. If it's greater than 0.05, then this suggests that the Levine, that sorry, that the assumption of equality of variance is met. If the p-value is less than 0.05 for the Levine's test, this suggests that the assumption of equality of variance is not met. Now, if the assumption of equality of variance is met, what you're going to do is you're going to look at the very top row. And the very top row, it says equal variances assumed. So that's if the p-value is greater than 0.05 for the Levine's test. However, in this situation, or in this example, you'll notice that the p-value is less than 0.05. So what you need to do is look at the bottom row, and it says equal variances not assumed. And depending on which row you're going to look at, those are the t-test statistics that you'll report. So for example, um, let's just pretend that the Levine's test was not significant. So we would look at equal variances assumed. What you would report is the very top row t-value, degrees of freedom, and p-value. But in this actual real-life situation, the Levine's test is significant. So we would look at the bottom row, and we would report the bottom rows t-test, degrees of freedom, and p-value. So based on that, the t-value, the degrees of freedom, and the p-value that we would use in this situation is t-value equals negative 6.57 degrees of freedom is 381.059, and the p-value is less than 0.001. Now, based on these results, if my hypothesis was non-directional, what I could say is that tumor size significantly differs between patients whose cancer spread to the lymph nodes and patients whose cancers have not spread to the lymph nodes. Now, one thing that I should point out is that if your hypothesis is directional, what you need to do is divide your p-value in half. Now, since my hypothesis was directional, technically I should divide my p-value in half. However, because the p-value is already under 0 .000, I don't need to. But just as an example, let's pretend that the p-value that we got was 0 0.05. What I would do is divide that in half and report that the p-value was 0 0.025. Now, another thing that I need to do is make sure that my research hypothesis is correct. That is, is the tumor size greater for the yes, this cancer has spread to the lymph nodes? So to do that, what you would do is look at the means, and what you would make sure is that under the yes row, that mean is higher 
than the no row. And if you look at that, our research hypothesis is correct. Thus, I could say that the size of the tumor is significantly larger if the cancer has spread to the lymph nodes. And that is how you run an independent sample t-test. If you have any questions based off of this video, go ahead and be sure to leave a comment. Uh, if you are one of my students, just go ahead and email me or text me.